What's going on, guys? We are only just a couple of weeks away from East vs. West 12, and one of the most interesting matches on the lineup for me is Leonidas Arcona up against Alexander Beziaskov, a.k.a. Schoolboy. Uh, the reason this match is particularly interesting for me is because of the introduction of Leonidas into the realm of the upper echelon of arm wrestling ranks within the world. Leonidas, of course, German-based bodybuilder, powerlifter, all-round strength athlete, looks phenomenal in the gym. Uh, this is really his first opportunity to demonstrate that he can compete against, I guess, what I would recall a, a refined arm wrestler in Schoolboy. So, Leonidas and Schoolboy will be happening at April 20 in Istanbul. And what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to go through the stylistic matchup of what this actually is, what we're looking at, the strengths and weaknesses of each of these guys, the vulnerabilities that they have, and ultimately where we can expect the match to go. Firstly, to talk about Leonidas Arcona a little bit more in detail, he, as I said, comes from the background of just being an all-round strength athlete, powerlifting, bodybuilding. Uh, he is in phenomenal shape. Now, a couple of years ago, we saw him start to collaborate with Devin Larratt, get on the table, and it was very clear he had a very natural ability towards arm wrestling. A lot of strength athletes don't have that. Leonidas was one of the guys who simply fell straight into the groove of having great side pressure, great hand control, and great ability to pronate through a drag hook. Now, when we saw him training with Devin, it looked very impressive. Now, we've since seen him compete once against Larry Wheels at King of the Table, who we all know very well. Larry has been very passionately diving into arm wrestling over the last three to four years. And Larry and Leonidas built very similar, um, really with a similar sort of pedigree within the strength world. And it was... Leonidas, who came out on top of Larry at King of the Table with a with a three to zero or well, four to zero victory, and it was done in such a fashion where he looked very similar to Larry. He just looked a little bit stronger. Every position that they went to, Leonidas just looked a little bit more secure. Uh, he was his joints looked a little bit more stable, and he was able to using fundamentally basic arm wrestling shapes perform quite well and defeat Larry Wheels. He was able to use an open arm sort of top roll defense that uh, wasn't into a king's move at all. It was just simply an open arm defense. His wrist flexion looked strong. His bicep strength looked great. And when he decided to add side pressure, or more so not when he decided to add side pressure, but when Larry became fatigued enough that the side pressure lane became open, Leonidas had the ability to suddenly transfer a lot of energy into direct side pressure and it almost took it to the point where Larry was being injured, potentially, by this sudden surge of side pressure. So Leonidas, as we said earlier, is someone who is very much built to do well on the arm wrestling table. Now, when it comes to Leonidas on the table and the style of arm wrestler that he is, we would have to describe him as a basic sort of fundamental hook drag puller. Now, he does have a great top roll as well, but he really lends or leans into his bicep strength and his wrist flexion strength to really control his opponent. He has demonstrated an ability to pronate and defend with pronation and also incorporate pronation into sudden side pressure. But it's very clear when you look at the, the anatomy of Leonidas that it is a bicep and a wrist flexion uh, lead weapon that he has. Now, of course, when you talk about these shapes, uh, where are the lanes that Leonidas really wants to get it to, into? It's anywhere here. He's happy to give away his pronation at the start in order to, to secure access to bicep and wrist flexion. He doesn't need to protect center. He's not really caring about height. He just wants a deep enough grip that he can bend his wrist and get on his bicep. From here, he can either just curl you back up. He can let you try to attack and, and drag and start to pronate. This is really his comfortable lane, and this is really where he will hope the match can go. Now, when we're talking about the vulnerabilities that Leonidas has on the table, for me, the first one is simply experience or the lack there of it. Now, although he is strong, there is such a thing that I like to describe as the curse of strength. And that curse is simply when you are such a fundamentally strong human before you become an arm wrestler, you are blinded by the opportunities and the need to use little tiny movements. And you end up using broad brush strokes like the bicep and wrist flexion as standalone weapons. 
incorporating all of the little movements in between and being fluid between the transitions of hooks and top rolls and presses is something that takes time and it takes a lot of it takes a lot of losses during practice during years of growing in the sport for you to really recognize the importance of those movements now for someone like leonidas he hasn't had that time he is incredibly strong I will never deny how strong Leonidas is, but he moves in a basic shape. Now, this, when you come up against someone like Schoolboy, will be a problem for him because he won't necessarily see what he's missing out on, and he will burn up fuel inefficiently. And even though he may have the peak strength required to get the job done, he won't know the pathway to it, potentially. Now, in respect to specific pathways that are vulnerable for him, I would say he is vulnerable to the high hook. Leonidas, as I mentioned before, is someone who is happy to, to really give away his pronator in order to, to gain cupping and get on his bicep. Now, when he gives away his pronator, that really allows an opportunity for his opponent to just shift over his rotation whilst keeping their pronation high. If this happens, Schoolboy is in a very significant advantage when it comes to leverage and rotation of his own top roll and high hook and side pressure. So Leonidas really needs to be aware of that. But of course, if he tries to protect that, he may just get top roll and make his wrist uh, vulnerable. So it all comes back down to the fact that Leonidas and his lack of experience is his biggest vulnerability. Now let's talk about Alexander Beziaskov. Now, Schoolboy is a very experienced and accomplished arm wrestler. He's been pulling for, I think, about 12 years. And although he's still in the young end of the spectrum, I think he has truly grown up amongst the sport. He's really developed as an arm wrestler right from the beginning. And he is not someone that is subject to the curse of strength. Now, is Schoolboy strong? I have no doubt. He is getting bigger. He is getting stronger. His gym numbers are going through the roof. And on the table, he is looking better and better with every super match that he has. Now, against Leonidas, uh, is he stronger than Leonidas? In Look, if you measured in a gym sense, absolutely not Leonidas is the stronger man. But when it comes to the arm wrestling strength, you would have to say that Schoolboy has advantages in the little things that Leonidas may have overlooked. But when it comes to the style and the expectation, we know that Schoolboy has a top roll. We know that he has a hook. We know that he can do anything in between. He can kings move. He can press. He can do all those things. And the question is just how is he going to execute that against someone who is as fundamentally strong and dangerous as Leonidas? Now, another factor we have to consider when we look at Schoolboy is that he is the taller man. He has a longer forearm and potentially a longer hand. Look, the palm width of Leonidas looks fairly significant, so that may not be an advantage for Schoolboy. But certainly, when it comes to getting his webbing high, you would think that Schoolboy has that natural leverage through the longer forearm that he's going to bring to the table. Uh, this is going to straight away make the first and most obvious battle about Schoolboy's pronated and rising height up against Leonidas's wrist flexion. Now, we know that Leonidas' bicep and wrist flexion are his favorite things and that he's going to potentially drop his wrist and supinate in order to make, make his opponent, Schoolboy, fall into that dragging hook situation. Now, yeah, Schoolboy... We know he's got a top roll, but look, there is the important factor that we need to consider that if he goes for the top roll, it is just hard counter versus hard counter. It's just schoolboy's back pressure and pronation against Leonidas's back pressure and wrist flexion. Now, given the strength, the raw power of Leonidas, that would be a risk. Now, it's not to say that schoolboy isn't strong enough to simply just win straight off the bat like that. He may well be, but... The thing that we have to expect from Schoolboy is the use of some subtle variations to the game. Now, one thing that I do not expect Schoolboy to do is to simply drop into a hook. Although Schoolboy can hook, and although he's a very respectable hooker, that would be a complete gift to Leonidas Arcona if Schoolboy just simply dropped into the hook. Now, if... He doesn't want to do either of those things. The all-out top roll is no good and the hook is no good. We have to find that halfway point or that somewhere in between 
that is the sweet spot. And I believe that will be done in the form of a high hook from Schoolboy. Now, a high hook from Schoolboy would look something like this. He would set up as though he is looking to top roll, but instead of committing to rising and rolling through pronation, we see a side pressure drive off the go as his opponent voluntarily drops their pr their pronation. He takes that gap for free and then wins center, gets supinated side of his arm kind of over the rotation of his opponent, adds a bit of drag, and then looks to top roll. From there, he can either take the wrist, he can close the shoulder, he can isolate the rotation more, he can lock down Leonardo's uh, Kona. Now, that's the strategy that I would anticipate Schoolboy to use. Like I said, he may be strong enough to just flat out top roll him, bust open the wrist, and away we go. But I think the most efficient and the most intelligent approach for him would be to commit some shoulder, establish a high hook, and then look to perhaps can open Leonidas Arcona. Now, if I had to talk about a vulnerability of Schoolboy, I, I would go back to what I saw when Schoolboy pulled Khaled and unsuccessfully navigated that situation. The problem for Schoolboy on that day was that he was unable to get outside of the hand and into the strap against Khaled. Khaled's wrist flexion was too much. Now, Leonidas and Khaled are two very different people. Khaled has a very, very significant sized hand where Leonidas has great strength, but the size of the hand is not quite the same. Khaled is an elite, elite grip strength athlete, and you can only say that like he is a true one of a kind. But look, Leonidas possesses a very similar threat in that he has very significant wrist flexion. And if Schoolboy finds himself in a situation where he can't get to straps, uh, he looked a little bit like a fish out of water against Khaled. And there's the risk that he looks like a fish out of water against Leonidas as well. What happened against Khaled that was truly a downfall for Schoolboy was that he mistakenly went into the hook too prematurely. He didn't trust his top roll. He didn't trust his high hook. And he went in to the hook and... Sure, he took control of center, but he was unable to get through Khaled's defense that day. And what happened in the end was schoolboy gassed himself out. Now, Leonidas has a very significant bicep. He has very significant wrist flexion. So he may well be able to force schoolboy into a similar situation. Schoolboy needs to be patient. Schoolboy needs to trust his own ability. Schoolboy needs to, if he gets dragged into an out-of-straps battle, needs to not rush for the pin. When Schoolboy rushes for the pin in an out-of-straps situation, he gasses himself out. And I think that truly is a big risk for him against Leonidas Arcona. Somebody needs to tell Schoolboy to just relax and let Leonidas have to force the issue. Because in that case, Schoolboy can retreat and retract and rise and roll and really be in a superior position in a technical aspect, and then he will be fine, I'm sure. But if he panics, he rushes for the pin, he gives away a lot of the high ground that he could have kept otherwise, and that walks straight into Leonidas' trap. Ultimately, I believe this is a fantastic match between a young man who has been a true student of the sport for a long time in Alexander Beziaskov up against one of the most promising strength athletes who is making an attempt or making at least an effort to become a true and recognized arm wrestler in Leonidas Arcona. It is battle of absolute bicep and wrist flexion, raw power up against a much more refined but still incredibly strong and capable athlete in Alexander Beziaskov. I would love to know what your thoughts are on how this match goes, who's the favorite, how do you see it playing out, and most importantly, who do you think will win? It all goes down on April 20 at East vs. West 12. Make sure you head to Core Sports to get your pay-per-view.